Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going over the best Game Boy Advance emulator on PC, MGBA. Let's get started. Alright, to kick things off, in terms of overall emulation accuracy, MGBA is extremely hard to beat for the Game Boy Advance. It's available as a core on RetroArch and also available as a standalone program. If you're already using RetroArch, just go on ahead and download the MGBA core and you're pretty much off to the races. If you're not comfortable with RetroArch or if you just want the standalone program, the MGBA standalone program is actually pretty good. The standalone version of MGBA can be found at mgba.io. I'll leave a link in the description below. This was just recently updated too. As of this video, the latest update was March 28th, 2021, and it's version 0.9.0. Once you're on mgba.io, go on ahead and click on the Downloads button at the top to bring yourself over to the Downloads page. Here you can pick it up for your operating system of choice, so it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Now for this video, I'll be installing it on Windows, and this is where it gets a little bit confusing because there are four different links. So you can see the 7Z Archive, the Installer, the 64-bit 7Z Archive, and the 64-bit Installer. Most processors nowadays are 64-bit, so that's the version I'm going to pick up. If your processor isn't 64-bit, then just go on ahead and pick up the 32-bit version. I'd recommend picking up, if you're on 32-bit, the 7Z Archive folder. The file is 12.3 megabytes. It's not very big at all, so just go on ahead and click OK and download it. In order to open up this file, you will need 7-Zip. If you don't have 7-Zip, I've got a tutorial video on how to install it. I'll leave a link in the description below. For what it's worth, installing 7-Zip on your computer is pretty much mandatory nowadays if you are going to be emulating. And if you're wondering why I went with the archive over the installer, it's because the archive is a lot easier to deal with. Everything's in one folder. You don't have to install anything. The emulator just works. And if you screw anything up, you can just delete that archive and download another one. The next step is to extract this archive, and I'm just going to do this into an empty folder I have. It's pretty quick and pretty simple. And from here, I'm pretty much done. I've got MGBA on my computer, and it just works by opening it. So here's MGBA up and running in all of its glory. Let's go on ahead and take a look at the menu options. By default here, you really don't need to configure a whole lot. This emulator comes set up pretty decently for the average user. First up, click on the Tools menu here, and then click on Settings this will open another window. From the audio video menu, you don't really need to change anything here, but if you're running into issues where the game is running a little bit too slow, maybe just double check your frame skips. You could put this to one to see if that helps speed up your game a little bit. If it does, great. If it doesn't, maybe try putting it up to two. Other than that, you can probably just keep this at zero. Game Boy Advance games aren't the hardest to emulate. On the interface menu, if you don't like seeing the FPS counter in the corner of your screen, you can just go on ahead and turn it off. For this video, I will be leaving it on just to show you that the games are running at full speed. On the emulation menu, you don't really need to change anything here either, but I will say if you're having no issues at all emulating these GBA games, maybe go on ahead and click that Enable Rewind button. It's a really cool feature. You press a button and it rewinds your game in real time. On the Enhancements page, if your computer can support it and you're looking for some high resolution scaling, switch the video renderer over to OpenGL. This is a pretty huge option. You can bump up the high resolution scale quite a bit without taxing your CPU. It puts the workload over to your GPU. And feel free to play around here until you find a setting that works for you. On the BIOS menu, if you have a BIOS, feel free to use it here, but it's not mandatory. For the paths, if you want to change the default storage locations for any of this stuff, you can, but by default, everything is saved to the same directory as your ROM. For the logging menu, you don't really need to change anything here. For the Game Boy menu, again, you don't really need to change anything here, but feel free to switch this around if you want. On the keyboard menu, if you're playing this game with a keyboard, you can map your controls here. On the controller menu, this is where you can set up your controls if you're using a controller. Just make sure your proper controller is selected, and then click the button to set all. Then just press the corresponding button with the highlighted button on the screen. You can map your controls pretty quickly and pretty easily here. On the shortcut menu, if you want to change up some of the key combinations or assign new keys for specific actions, you can do so here. For example, the default for save state is Shift F10. But if you don't like that, you can just change it. On the shaders menu, you don't really have to change anything here. If you wanted to add custom shaders, this is where you'd do it. Now, fun fact about MGBA is that it will play games in an archive format. So if you have a bunch of different ROMs that are zipped up and you don't really want to unzip them all, all you have to do is just click Load ROM in Archive. You select the game you want in a zip file and this thing will load it. If your games are already unzipped and ready to go, you can just click Load ROM. 
or you can add the entire folder to your library. Now for this video, I'm going to load up a game from an archive. So select Load ROM in Archive here. I'll select Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival. And there's a bunch of different versions of this ROM in this 7-zip folder, which you can see right here. From here, I'll just select the version I want to play, which is the USA version. I'll click open and I'm pretty much good to go. One question I seem to get asked quite a bit is how do you add in cheats to these emulators? So let's take a look at that now. In Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival, there are some menu options that you can unlock, and you can also unlock Akuma, which is not currently showing up in arcade mode. To add in cheats for the game, you do have to enter them manually, so you go to the Tools menu here and then go to Cheats. From here, you input your cheats, but if you don't know what cheats to enter, you have to Google them. MGBA supports GameShark, Action Replay, and Code Breaker, so let's go ahead and take a look at some codes. The Google search was pretty simple, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival GameShark codes, and let's take a look at the first link. And from here, there are a bunch of different GameShark codes, so the one I'm looking for here is Everything Unlocked. So what I'm going to do is just copy this code here. Back on MGBA, I'm going to click add GameShark because it's a GameShark code. And from here, I want to change this from Untitled to whatever I want to call the code. So I'm just going to call it UE for Unlock Everything. In the side box here, I'll click Paste to add in the GameShark code, and then I'll click Add. And you can see here from Unlock Everything or UE, the GameShark code underneath. That's pretty much it. I'll reset the ROM and the code will be in effect. So let's close this out. I'll go to emulation here, go to reset, go back to the main menu whenever I can get there. And now you can see everything is unlocked. GameShark code is working. And to double check this, I'll go into arcade mode here and you'll see the additional character that was unlocked. Actually two of them, I'm covering the other one. Now everything I've shown you today is kind of just the basics to help you get going with this emulator. MGBA can still do so much more. I definitely recommend tinkering around, playing around with it, and seeing what works for you. If you have never checked out MGBA, check it out, it's an amazing emulator. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know your thoughts on MGBA in the comments below. If there's another emulator for another system you want me to check out, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.